also the opportunity to be one of those states that elects possibly a new governor because 36 of those governor's races are up and they kind of go on a roller coaster. This is the year when every four years, 36 of them are up. And the last time we had this happened to be one of those years ending in a zero. And all of those men and women that were elected that year when we went from 30 Democratic governors to 20 then pulled out their redistricting pens and drew the borders of your House of Representatives, which ever since has been pretty unrepresentative, with the majority of us as Americans voting for Democratic uh, representatives. And yet, when the districts work there, uh, do their stuff, uh, Congress turns out to be a much more obstructionist and uh, backward-looking uh, group of men and women than our people as a whole. So this is uh, your ability over these next, what is it, 23 days we have now? 23 days. Uh, your ability to, to get on the phones and to do the door-to-door -door and to affect the outcome of this particular decision in a really important place uh, could make a big difference for our country in terms of whether or not uh, we hold the United States Senate and continue, uh, uh, and continue in the great tradition of Tom Harkin, who is one of the most effective United States Senators that ever served in the halls of Congress. So I uh, hope you guys are up for greatness. And uh, I've enjoyed, I'm going to be campaigning for Bruce Braley later on this afternoon. Made them put on a guitar. That's how committed I feel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was with Jack Hatch at uh, the Drake Diner earlier today. Anybody familiar with the Drake Diner? Oh, there we go. There's a late nighter at the Drake Diner. And uh, was at the Drake Diner. Was at the Mount Hebron Baptist Church with him as well. Uh, over these last seven years, and prior to that for another seven years, I've had the honor to serve in executive office uh, as mayor of Baltimore at a time when our city had become very dangerous, one of the most violent, addictive, and abandoned cities in America. And we managed to turn things around, head a better direction, save a lot of lives, and it was with a new way of governing. And it was that new way of governing that we brought forward in state government. And it's very different than the way of governing that our, a lot of our parents and grandparents were accustomed to, which was always, most often, kind of ideological. It was always hierarchical, orders from on high, bureaucratic in its methods. But what I've seen happening all around the country, and I'm curious, you probably see it as well, is there's a new way of governing that's changing public administration throughout our country, the ability to get things done as a people. Um, and it's emanating out from our cities, from our towns and our counties. And it is very collaborative. It is performance measured. It is open. It is transparent. And it is visible, real time, real fast, and personally responsive and interactive in ways that we never had the ability to do with our government before the arrival of the internet and some of these other technologies that we all take for granted now. <coughs> so uh, in our state, uh, we've been able to uh, make better choices in order to achieve better results. And here's the ultimate test. Second fastest rate of job creation in our region, the highest since the recessionary low, highest median income in the country, 